Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Welcome to podcast number 31 on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. Surviving the Unwinding of Time. Driving the Mind to See by Shannon Kringen. Thank you for plunging deep into the capacity of fantasy manifesting into reality. Thank you, sun pumping light into the high caliber raspberry, creating an unusual sensation, this unique vibration, grabbing the rabbit out of the hat, knowing that this new phase is here, here. It's clear, dear. Fear melted away. Thank you, double X, messy love affair, twirling hair, staring into webcam land, balance, pristine elegance. Your chance for romance is enhanced by your stance. Drawings and longings entwine with the divine, sail boating floating, spinning spokes, handsome blokes, sky fading soft hues, Enjoy the blues. That's your clue to renew this stew of influencing serendipity. Remember, we are the music makers. We are the dreamers of dreams. We bring winter cream, shining beams of light, allowing souls flight through the vortex core, opening the many doors that store armor. A more, armor, a more, a mirror, reflecting projections, enhancing connections, nurturing, earth, air, fire, water, birthing worth, hiring caretakers of trees and honeybees, seeing pieces, the cosmic rocking it, birds flocking it, words building, willingness to fill the void and avoid, avoid dance. Dancing beyond the duality of empty versus full, interesting versus dull, yin versus yang, wild versus tame, order versus chaos. Say us equanimous, every cell tingling in the delight of being alive, surviving the unwinding of time, driving the mind to see such infinite intricate patterns of multiplicity, synchronicity, unity in diversity, curiosity, increase the velocity, explore this philosophy. Goddess Kring Radio, Radio. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Join me for podcast 31 on Hollow Earth Radio. And I'm feeling so blue. I don't know what to do. And I'm feeling so blue. I don't know what to do. Hey, hey, people who think I'm too into myself. Maybe you need Maybe to get more into, get into yours. Into yours. Into yours. I share my story, share my story. and then my you story. reciprocate, and, you share, and you share your story. story. Everyone has a story. Into the self. Oh, he's so into himself. Oh, she's so into herself. Let's all get into ourselves and share the yin and the yang. It's all a strange game. You're a little insane. Don't forget what you are. You're a rock and roll star. I guess that's a song written by the birds that Tom Petty covered. Tom Petty widens my jetty. Mick Jagger struts in, his dagger grabs me. Tori Amos doesn't blame us, but names us. So, here we go, one, two, three. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 
H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z Now I know my ABCs Next time won't you sing with goddess cring Bada boo bada bing Stinging rings the cring Catch the wind song spiral drive Crack the code left and right node I wander and I wander Tripping over sand dollars, moon hollers, key robbers, enchanted lands, smoky hands, rough and cracked. Take this sand and stand alone, all one. I present the present, desert the desert, exercise, bring exorcism, cleanse. Shika shika, shika shika, shika shika, shika shika, shika shika. The turning tides, unwinding lines of time in the turning tides. Catch that wind song spiral drive. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, here in Seattle. Podcast number 31. I was just thinking about duality, you know, the us versus them, and how my own personal philosophy is that humans there would be less violence and prejudice and war in the world if more humans could see that we're all connected. And I realize that there are some people who are um, self-righteous and angry and perhaps they'll never do that. But let me just say that the philosophy I have, if if more humans would adopt it, perhaps the world would, would again be more peaceful and there would be less violence and prejudice and war in the world. The us versus them. And what I mean by that is, you know, I am a man and you are a woman. I am a Democrat and you are a Republican. Or I am a socialist and you are a communist. I am a rich person and you are a poor person. I am a transgender and you are a, you know, regular heterosexual. Or I am polyamorous and you are monogamous. Or... I am Palestinian and you are Israeli, or I am South African uh, white and you are South African black, or if somebody is part Asian and part black or part white or part um, Hispanic or part this or part that and a little bit Native American or a little bit from India and a little bit from Pakistan or from you know, Africa or Asia or America, North America versus South America. There is plants versus animals. There are humans versus all the other species. So there's like, you know, there's racism, classism, sexism, and I would add speciesism. And there's different ways in which people judge each other and categorize each other And I think it's kind of normal for humans to want to put people or people, plants and animals into different categories, I guess, because we want to organize and think that this is how it works and this is reality. But there's part of me that really wishes we could go beyond the duality. And when somebody is accused of something and they're told that they need to shut up and listen to somebody else and that they better have empathy, I feel like empathy should go both directions. You know, even if one person is considered the majority and one person is considered the minority, I feel like there should be some kind of cooperation happening. And if the pendulum swings in the opposite direction, like there are some feminists who say that if women took over the world, that would be good. Like there would be no war. I'm not sure if that's really true, though. I think it depends on who the women are that take over the world. You know, right now, it's mostly men that are in power, and there is a lot of war in this world. But thankfully, there's also a lot of people that are cooperating and being peaceful towards one another and helping each other out, thankfully. But I will say that I am somebody who doesn't think that necessarily women should take over because then the pendulum would be swinging. I think it was Jermaine Greer. Is that that lady? She's from Australia. I think she said the opposite to patriarchy is not matriarchy, but fraternity. And I think what she meant was, 
if the pendulum swings and if women bossed everyone else around in a very domineering kind of way, you know, the way a, a man would boss people around, like, you know, there are people, male and female, that are leaders, that are diplomatic and ethical, and they're not dictators. They're, they're more like a leader with ethics that, that thinks in the interests of the group of people that he or she is ruling. That would be fine with me, those kinds of leaders, whoever they are. But if somebody thinks that the solution is to have women just take over and dominate the planet, I'm not really sure that that it's kind of like it's just similar to what we already have, except it's just flipped to the to the women instead of the men bossing everyone around. But then again, maybe women wouldn't be so bossy, but it just depends on, on the, see, I don't want to stereotype, you know, men are this and women are that because there's different kinds of men and there's different kinds of women. So I feel like if we go around accusing people of being, of uh, don't stereotype those people, and yet you stereotype the people that you think shouldn't stereotype, then it's just more stereotyping. You see what I'm saying? So if the pendulum swings all the way to if every leader was a woman and men had no no uh, power in becoming a leader, I don't think that would be fair either. So it would be too far in the other direction. And so the balance and, and the healthy ethical way of being would be to have more of an equal distribution of power between men and women, ethical, good leaders that are men and women and have a mix, even and throw in transgender too. Like, you know, if someone is a man or a woman or transgender somewhere in between being male and female, does it really matter? Not to me. So I feel like it should be more seeing the unity in the diversity and not having the pendulum swing. So the opposite to, of patriarchy is not matriarchy, but fraternity. And I think that Germaine Greer, what she meant by that was it's cooperation between the male and the female energy in this world that would be a lot healthier than what we currently have. The same thing with... Oh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, rich and poor. You know, in the United States, one thing that really concerns me, and I love that Jimmy Carter and Bernie Sanders both spoke about this recently, about the biggest problem in the United States these days is the huge disappearance of the middle class. And the income inequality gap is that now the United States has some of the most wealthy people in the world People make huge amounts of money in certain businesses in this country and get paid astronomical amounts of money per year or per hour or per day. And then our basic minimum wage, federal minimum wage, is still seven fifty an hour, I think, which is something I made over 20 years ago. So it's like our wages, you know, people are extremely poor and extremely wealthy and there's not much in between. And this causes a lot of stress and anger. And I think that if you think it's rich versus poor, then that creates a conflict because then you have poor people resenting wealthy people and you have wealthy people saying, hey, don't take my money. This is my money and I'm keeping it for myself. I'm going to hoard it. And they don't want poor people dragging them down. And I know rich people sometimes stereotype poor people as being lazy. And poor people sometimes stereotype rich people as being you know, just making tons of money and not deserving it and not working hard for it. And then there are other people who think wealthy people work hard and that's how they got to where they are. And there are other people who realize that some poor people work really hard and yet they're poor because their wages are so low or they have a big family to support and they don't really make enough money to do that even if they work hard. I'm somebody who works really hard, but I'm fairly low income by middle class American standards but my expenses are fairly low, so I kind of live like a middle class person. But if you looked at my income on a, on a chart, I would come off as pretty low income. So where are there, whereas there are some people who are considered middle class or wealthy, and if they spend a lot of money and have a really expensive lifestyle, then they're actually going to be stressed out and not have enough money if they spend too much money. So basically, if we stereotype rich people and poor people, that's not really going to help us. And that's another reason why I love that Jimmy Carter and Bernie Sanders talked about income inequality and how when money 
is when when wealthy people have all the power and poor people don't really have much power, that creates a lot of fear and anger. And it perpetuates the stereotype of rich versus poor, of corporations versus individuals. If we don't have enough of a social infrastructure like social security, universal health care for all, like public health care for all, rich, poor, young, old, sick, and healthy, all covered equally. You know, I do think that medical treatment and health care should be all about equality and that all American citizens should be have access basically to good health care. And it shouldn't it sh- you shouldn't get really good health care if you're wealthy and really bad health care if you're poor. That is a very competitive, stressful, way too far in the capitalism direction of society. So I think that it would be better if we had more money put into mass transit and universal health care, public health care for all. That would make things more equal for people so that if someone is low income, but they can see a doctor and have access to affordable rent, if rent was only a third of everyone's income, whether they're rich or poor, then at least low income people wouldn't be so stressed out and they wouldn't resent wealthy people. And perhaps wealthy people wouldn't resent poor people as much if wealthy people knew that poor people weren't so angry, if they had access to health care, if all of us had equal access to health care, no matter how much money or how little money we make, I think that would take a lot away, a lot of fear and anger and this sort of overall feeling of competition that we have in the United States of America. So the point of this talk is beyond duality, the duality of us versus them. Us versus them could be rich versus poor, could be whatever skin color you have versus a different kind of skin color. It could be what language you speak, if you think one language is superior to other languages, if you think women are superior to men or transgender are superior to, you know, male or female, um, uh, non-binary versus binary. I mean, there's so many different kinds of people on this planet, and I personally I'm accepting of of various kinds of people in this planet, although I'm not a huge fan of the Ku Klux Klan at all. So I I guess I shouldn't even say that because obviously that's really upsetting when people spread a negative message and a hate message. So I'm not really into that, although I do support free speech, but I think speech should be respectful and, and consider the other people but I don't have the perfect solution, but I wish that humans would go beyond the duality and speciesism. If humans didn't feel like they were the boss of this entire planet, you know, if, if human beings had more respect and appreciation for other animals, plants and animals and insects and even spiders, like I don't kill spiders. And I know a lot of people who do kill spiders and I feel sad for the spiders. And I, I have empathy. Like when I see a spider, I imagine what it's like to be that spider Of course, I don't really know what it's like to be a spider, but I don't squish spiders partly because I imagine if I was a spider, I would not want a human being to squish me. I would want to survive and I would want to, you know, have my babies or, you know, mate with my, you know, spider mate. You know what I mean? I'd want to build my spider web and live out my spider life, you know, and die of natural causes and not have a human being come and squish me or spray me with poison. So I feel similar about the meat industry. I sometimes do eat meat, but if I was like following my heart and being perfectly pure and ethical in my own psyche, I would be probably be a vegan. I don't eat a lot of dairy products. I do eat some meat and I do eat some eggs, but I don't really eat a lot of um, milk. I don't eat any milk, actually. I don't drink milk, uh, cow milk. But I also don't drink um, almond milk or coconut milk or, or like nut butter milks because of they have carrageenan and guar gum and different fillers and uh, soy lecithin and sunflower, safflower oil, or, you know, different weird fillers. And so I don't, I just don't touch any of that stuff. I don't eat any milk at all. I mostly just drink water, coffee, tea, kombucha. I love ginger kombucha, uh, which is a fermented drink that has good bacteria. So beyond duality would be nice in terms of speciesism. 
if humans didn't feel superior to other species, perhaps we would take better care of animals and we maybe we would either improve how we slaughter animals or maybe more people would be vegetarians and and farms could be a lot smaller and we wouldn't have factory farms that basically treat animals like they're machines and like their job is just to serve humans. So I love animals and I volunteer at the zoo, which I know some people this, you know, think the zoo is, is not a good place, but I, I uh, think the, of the animals as being protected and they have access to a vet. And when an, a zoo animal gives birth to a baby, their animal is protected from predators and protected from, I know that lions and tigers sometimes kill each other's cubs. And at the zoo, they make sure that doesn't happen. So it's sad that the the um, habitat for many of these animals, you know, a lot of animals are going extinct and the habitat for these animals is being destroyed by, deve- you know, human development, by chopping down forests and building man-made things for humans. And so it's sad that, you know, he, uh, different animals and plants have less space on this planet for just being themselves. And so I feel like wildlife sanctuaries and animal parks and sanctuaries that are protected, whether it's protecting plants or animals or both, are very sacred places. And I believe in protecting the different species. And so when I go to the zoo, I feel a real appreciation for the variety of the species and the plants and the animals that are there. And I enjoy the way the animals smell and the way they look. And I I respect and admire their intelligence and I learn from observing them. And again, it is sad that animals are in captivity, but it's also sad when an animal is trying to survive and their habitat is destroyed and they're hunted or poached by a human or they die because of lack of food, because the habitat has shrunk and maybe all the trees are being chopped down and so when the animal tries to hunt it can't find enough food and it starves to death because basically of human development. So I feel like of all the things that humans do on this planet the zoo probably does more good than harm and so I do volunteer and appreciate and enjoy and love all the animals that I see there and I observe there and I've taken many photographs of the different animals and plants that are there and I love my cat. So just wanted to share that the message of beyond duality, that there's unity in diversity. And I know this is a philosophy that I have, and some people share this philosophy with me. I'm kind of a nudist and a naturist and a nude figure model. And so I realized that the actual real world right now doesn't work this way. But I'm I'm just saying that if more people would acknowledge the duality and more people would see the unity in the diversity and look at themselves in the mirror and realize if somebody is prejudiced, if they could look in the mirror and forgive themselves and go, look, wh- why am I prejudiced? I'm, I'm coming from a place of fear. Is there a way that I can love and respect myself enough to love and respect people that are different from me and see the commonality, see that we are all one on this planet? And I feel, again, I feel the same way towards when I see another kind of animal or plant or species, I have empathy and I feel connected to plants and animals. And I try to feel connected to as many different kinds of people as I can. I'm not as much of a people person as I am into plants and animals and artwork and music. I tend to like to connect with people indirectly through this microphone, through my camera, through uploading and recording things online, through doing live performances, through watching movies and listening to music. I love audiobooks. I love all of the amazing book authors in the world. Thank you, everybody who writes inspiring fiction and nonfiction. Thank you to all of the screenwriters who write amazing screenplays of movies, whether they're documentaries or fiction. I really appreciate what human beings do in those ways. So I'm on this planet. I'm Shannon Nicole Kringen, and I'm here in Seattle, USA. I'm a multimedia artist and a figure model, and I love to just record my thoughts. And I hope that I'm not offending anybody. And these are just ideas that I have and philosophies that I have of beyond duality. I know somebody in my family who studies um, non-duality. 
and Joseph Campbell was into non-duality and there's just like seeing beyond the us versus them and again that could be you know a certain kind of human versus a certain kind of human it could be an animal and a plant it could be a person and a plant it could be any combination thereof male female rich poor you know political to the left political to the right etc I think there's a more of a balance and a wholeness that could happen. And I really wish we could have single payer universal public health care for every American, rich, poor, young, old, sick, and healthy, all equally covered so that it would alleviate the stress that people have and it would simplify our system and it would be less expensive than the current one that we have. And people would not have to worry about medical bills. They could just focus on whatever their job was and their family and their friends and their life. And if someone wants to, you know, be an entrepreneur and make a lot of money, they can do that and they have basic health care covered. Same thing if somebody is poor, they have basic health care covered. So rich and poor would be more equal. So there would be less of a feeling of competition. You know, a little bit of a competition energy can be a good thing to motivate people, but I don't think that health care should be one of those things. You know, I also think that wages should be lowered for the extremely wealthy and raised for the extremely low income. So I feel like people deserve at least $10 an hour as an entry level wage at a job, especially if they're over 18. And I think that, you know, if somebody makes $3,000 an hour, does anybody really need to make $3,000 an hour? Probably not, or 5000 or 10000 or $200 million a year or, you know, some of the most wealthy people make so much money, it's unbelievable. And I imagine that they're afraid of losing their money and they, they want to just keep it and hoard it and not pay taxes, etc. I totally understand that. I'm a bit of a tightwad myself. I tend to always be afraid that I'm going to run out of money. So I save every penny that I can and I spend as little as I can. And I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good right now. I'm okay. I'm low income, but I'm fine. But I know what it's like to have a fear of scarcity. I have a poem that goes, fear of scarcity, fear of scarcity, fear of scare scarcity, of fearsity, scare of fear in our fair city. So it would be nice if we had a fair city. I know in Seattle, we don't have rent control and some rents are skyrocketing out of control. I am currently in a program where my rent is a third of my income. And I am very lucky and grateful. And I wish that everybody could have rent that was only a third of their income, unless they can afford to pay more and want to pay more. But I think even a wealthy person, you know, should not have to pay more than a third of their income. Like if somebody makes, you know, $10,000 a month and they could pay $3,000 a month for rent or mortgage or whatever. And if someone only makes $2,000 a month, and they pay like, you know, $700 a month for rents or something like that. So that's what I think. I think that the world would be more, well, less violent. I feel like there's a, some of the violence that happens in the world is probably because somebody is just a little bit mentally ill and just kind of snaps. But I think a lot of the violence that happens in the world is because somebody is just angry about how, how unfair things are and about the lack of justice and the lack of how one person's freedom is another person's slavery. It's true that if people are free to be really corrupt, and pay people very low wages, that's the kind of freedom that leads to slavery. So ironically, slave wages, like if, if, if a corporation is allowed to make tons and tons and tons of money and pay their CEOs tons and tons and tons of money and, and find loopholes and not pay taxes or just pay a very small amount of taxes, and then they pay their low-end workers really, really low amount of money to the point where they're living in poverty even though they're working full time, that's kind of like unethical freedom. So if I was king of the world, I would have higher minimum wage, a lower maximum wage, universal public health care for all that would be nonprofit, and it would be funded by the government, and this would be regulated, and the cost would be kept reasonable and fair, and every citizen would pay taxes, and even if you're homeless, you would still be able to go to the doctor and get health care, even if you're not paying taxes because you're homeless and unemployed, you would still be able to go to the doctor. But all the working citizens would be paying taxes and it would be publicly funded health care and social security would be increased and mass transit. We would have a lot more solar panels everywhere and we would have high speed trains and we would have more electric cars and more incentive. And then the cost of electric cars would go down if more people were buying them, etc. 
and we would clean up the water and put millions and millions of dollars into cleaning up the water in Flint, Michigan, and all the other places in this country. I've heard in places in California, there's lead in the water, there's different toxins in the water, and we need to clean that up and put lots of money into doing that. Instead of having money go into war and Wall Street, we would have money going into cleaning up the water and the infrastructure of this country and fix the potholes and fix the bridges and have solar panels on the top of every building and maybe get more solar panels on the top of of regular citizens' houses. And they have these tile now that are solar that you can put on your roof and it looks like regular tile, but it's a solar power thingy McJagger. Thank you for listening. Podcast number 31 on Hollow Earth Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Seattle. Okay, let's just start recording now. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, recording. Testing one, two, three. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five corpulent porpoises, six pairs of Donald Fonzo's tweezers, 7,000 Macedonians in full battle array, eight brass monkeys from the ancient sacred crepes of Egypt, nine apathetic, sympathetic, diabetic old men on roller skates with marked propensity for procrastination and sloth. Thank you, Mr. Humphreys, my eighth grade choir teacher, for telling us that we would never forget that. I learned that when I was 13 years old, and I'm now 48. And sure enough, I still remember it, Mr. Humphreys. Thank you so much. And now, here's a poem I wrote. This is for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, yeah. Okay, here it is. Embezzler Presler by Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Embezzling president, president, guzzle that soda, that soda. Have another can, have another can. High fructose corn syrup, corn syrup. Diabetes in a can, can't stand ya. Wish they would can ya, can't stand ya. Wish you would can ya. Lego my ego, Mar-a-Lago, ain't no Dr. Zhivago, fly into Chicago, meet your shareholders, casino boy, bada boo, bada bing, banking on that tax credit, health care plan. Understand, Understand corrupt, man. corrupt man. Slam it down, slam it down. Eat more ham, eat more ham, eat more ham, eat more ham. Clog those arteries, arteries. Impeach, peachy keen, leaning to dreaming, to dreaming. I love you, Bernie Sanders, Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter. Go solar, go solar. Save the whales, save the whales. Single payer health care, health care. This ain't no joke. This ain't no joke. This ain't Stop, no blowing joke. Stop blowing smoke. Stop blowing smoke. House of Mirrors. House of warped mirrors. fire. House warped fire. Fire that whistle fire blower. That whistle sire. Blower. Sire. 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 Higher. 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 Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. And Look fire and yourself. Nice, <laughs> 
Hollow Earth Radio Seattle, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, podcast number 31. Thanks for tuning in. You say autistic, I say artistic by Shannon Kringen. You say autistic, I say artistic. Autism, artism. The autistic artist or the artistic autistic. Introverted extrovert, extroverted introvert. In a flash, She was freed from lightning, lovers touch far away, instead inner light igniting the way, trying to understand with true clarity, felt like an outsider, pirate longing for the cove, not wanting to fit in, wanting to stand out, yet be accepted for the unique role she plays, not lazy at all like a doll, with the secret under the bed. Water patterns, broken glass, San Diego sand, not eating pills like candy, handing dandelions out, landing, standing solo, beyond the tension of opposites, composing or composting, composing or composting. Self-abandonment got her stranded again, polluted and uprooted. The face in the crowd took her hand raised her above water seeds lightning seed of green eyes on rising steam freed from judgment space to enter the vortex of authenticity clarity alone all one center focus balance risen above criticism the sky is not falling you're safe scattered chaos brain and all Thought patterns, risen above, and all. The witness speaks. Empathy for the predator. Empathy for the predator. Empathy for the predator. Listening to silence be with nature. Mirroring back to you the perfect beauty. Life you are. Dare to stare into the lens. Dare to care not to tear apart at the heart the art of knowing the glow of soul showing full mojo flow damn the torpedoes allow life to feed us another poem this is hollow earth radio goddess kring podcast number 31 
Trust Nature, Ingest What You Want to Manifest by Shannon Kringen. Relax out of the trap, rest inside the gap, walking clockwise laps, lapping up the dance, rolling dice of chance. Find a comfy spot, prop your back up, clear away the muck, gentle sweet smell, ginseng plants dwell, oxygen reverberating. 96751 96751 96751 Are you sure about the money? Synthesizing tangled chaos, endangered smashing smoky sea, sea, English socialized national care, every citizen covered, ethical humane governing, no longer hovering in fear, Crinkling, crumbling, creasing, ceasing, democracy, increased diplomacy. Solar panels, electric cars, worm bins win. Worshipping chard, spinach, kale, organic greens are the scene. Scrambled land handed to me, dissolve this cranium pattern. Light the dark up with inner lanterns. Shatter Shadubi, be a newbie. Weed the garden, dropping baggage, awake to now. Allow abundance, a full dance, a fun dance of abundance, a dance of bonds. Play with material existence, insist on light hearted, loving presence, infused in every cell, every pore alive. Trust nature. Ingest what you want to manifest. Drop the rusted chain out of the rusty cage. Aged, fine human, everything will be all right. More and more off the grid. Putting a lid on phony baloney. Decrease the corporation, increase cooperation. Incast the outcast, outcast the incast. Highlight the underdog. Unity in diversity, don't need no university. Universal out of her shell, don't need no rehearsal. A total reversal of zombie spell. Dwelling in her shell, safe and secure, yet risky and rare. Been in the mood of interludes of solitude. So I guess, yeah, I'm into the whole share the poetry thingy Mick Jagger right now with you. So now let's do the whole Frisky Fridge Magnets by Shannon Kringen. Love like you can find frisky sniffs. Have your major good loving macho sweet man. Peace out. My man sleeps yowza, gentle prince. Be a big bunny freak. Believe you will suck seed. You are strength and love with laughter. Bring support, friend. Need sniffs. Encourage his positive smart licks. Take the best strong heart always. Scream in therapy. Smile, make it better. Do for our work on. Do it again, happen. We give a chocolate job. Us laugh as of today, I vacation. To the it or... Hello, she feels man today, yowza me. The Peter baby purrs. The bloated cat, stink of fish. Wishing help is soft. One day I are, but am what? Work ferret needed. Alone, freak, scream, burn food. Scream, bird food. Feel my baby am real. Leave devil, get out of unappreciated job. Baby, you are my spunky. Anal finicky puppy. To feel you, schnun. <laughs> you know, I wrote that poem. It's called Frisky Fridge Magnets. That was literally written with, I had these words of fridge magnets, and I was only allowed to use fridge magnets to write a poem. So that's what that was. That's funny. I forgot all about that. Thanks for listening. This is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. I have a website, shannonkringen.com, where I share... Um, uh, photos and music and 
poetry and I'm a figure model full time for a living here in Seattle and you can see examples of paintings and drawings and photographs and sculptures that art students have done of me over the years. I love to share and do show and tell. I have Instagram and Twitter and Flickr and Facebook and Tumblr and Live Journal and just all kinds of like blogs where I write and share and enjoy the multimedia creative expression. I encourage you to follow your bliss, do what you love and express yourself and share yourself with the world. And thank you very much for tuning in. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring Podcast 31 on Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. Repression by Shannon Kringen. Let me tell you about repression and the loss of soul, wandering, wandering in a hopeless black hole. Synchronicity appears to disappear. Illusion, confusion, delusion. My descent into madness carries such a weight, weight. A state of gloom, doom, vroom. Where's my flying broom? For a witch am I. Can't you see it in my eyes as they spy? Corny rhymes, stitching time. It's about time to indulge in the sublime and create a Kringenstein. Another poem by Shannon Kringen, Retriever of Gold. Running barefoot on San Diego sand with lightning, retriever of gold, retriever of gold, I am told, break the mold, let go, come hither, do not wither, sunshine, ocean, warmth, come forth, lance me with your moonbeam dream, space chases me, does not erase me, does not erase me. Ah, yes, I see his face, embrace his grace, slide into my tide, dive in, bearded goat man, kissing you warms my honey dew drops, hair brushing across chest, ingest spirit, you hear it? Spirit, you hear it? Espiritu Santo, dancing naked in San Diego sand, Dividing time, erasing lines, combining minds. Another poem. This is Hollow Earth Radio, Goddess Kring Podcast number 31, Seattle. Thanks for tuning in. Volcano Ash Erupting Green by Shannon Kringen. Whispers of gloom, doom, vroom, I'm out of here. Pulling my hair in tear, I must stare into the lens of my camera. Sorry, Tamara. The deed to proceed planting seeds, volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers filter rain, down the drain in chains again? No. Light speed seeds of rebirth, black fire feather rain, straining the stream of consciousness again, bucked from the horse once more, ignore, ignore, ignore the steaming demon shit, I hit the pavement again. Back to square one, wash away that fertile dung. Full of fear, fuel, use the fear as fuel. Fertilizer is shit, tranquilizer is death. Spiral of denial always near, steer clear of that mirror, narcissistic dear. Go ahead, suck me in, Ophelia. Melodrama, pyrana, eating bone and flesh, poor me. Ah, bore me, whore me, store me in a cool, dry place. This rhyme is divine, yeah, right. I fight despite the miracle of my birth and question my worth. Low esteem of self, I feel stuck on a shelf, collecting dust. A wet nail begins to rust. Why can't I enjoy my lust? Give me the magical fairy dust. Lust, trust, thrust into my body with Scorpio soul of long ago kindred eyes, sprinkle it from head to toe, glitter come hither and enchant me, plant me where I need to be, honey, just be, honey, just be. Hey, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. You're listening to Podcast 31 on Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. I'm kind of on a roll now. Typecast My Dragon Sleeps by me, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. <laughs> I'm just reading my poems now for those of you who are wondering what the heck am I doing now. Instead of doing a monologue about different beliefs I have, I'm just going to read my poetry. So 
Typecast My Dragon Sleeps by Shannon Kringen. Typecast My Dragon Sleeps, esoteric moon, sliver me with your doom, cut into the code that wants cracking, crackling, black fire, feather, rain, tumbling and twirling through the typecast tunnel, tide truth come hither to cring, shaman or shame, Shannon, circling sands of synchronicity, in his hands I see circling seas, Tux lux, curling tail, Egyptian musk, trust the thrust. Typecast, my dragon sleeps, monkey moon coming soon, phases of seeing the gray balloon, sealing the monkey moon, mooning the tune of groom, blooming the shine of kringline, unwinding time in line, freely sifting through the sands of loving kindness, heart soul take toll of glowing eyes, sighing eros, point to pomegranate, smooth hard granite, be planting it. Dolphin Dreams Robin Sings by Shannon Kringen. Mythical figures haunt me. Dolphin dreams and Robin sings to me. Detach, let go, feel the melancholy glow. Heal, baby, heal, reach out, cutting away doubt in this drought of passion. Should be fashioned to have compassion for the self-indulgence, scares me and dares me. Through the vortex, into the nectarine winter cream, dance of souls uniting, shouldn't gripe of your own hype. Ten thousand souls unite in judgment mirroring fright. Free of this, if you want it. Number five ain't no jive. Freedom and embracing grace. Change the space. Bending, melting, warped out. Into fractal patterns. Quantum physics. Ain't no lie, honey pie. Lego My Ego by Shannon Kringen. Palm pilot of my life. They decided to plant 50 million trees and give the natives back their land. They woke up to great inner joy, and they let go of their ego toys. Paradox Rocks by Shannon Kringen Eucalyptus sent the wind, eucalyptus sent me back. They decided to inject their reflections, stopping with the shadow projection, to dance with this paradox on the rocks. Park the Dark A gain of soul, sunlight, jewel, Making love with he who dances dove, fitting glove, vibrational harmony, swan love, one love. Thanks, Miranda, for the verdanda, in tandem with nat natural sexuality. Total present moment awareness. Thanks for synchronicity and quantum physics. We do need our Sylvia Plath, along with the sugar plum Glenda the Good Witch Fairy, those striped socks, ticking clocks, crowing, cockadoodle doo, didgeridoo, down under land of wonder. Yeah, I'm back home, born to roam the globe, tribal vortex, guiding context, extent of which forever grows, glows and knows true beauty, a little booty for sure, enduring the blur and curing the world wind. Cookie dough spin, winding time, divide these lines of rhyme into my mark, no longer parking in the dark, but barking with a fork, carrying the torch of gorgeous, radiant, gradient, fadiant, sizzle love being. No dull, gents, stained in fame, drained of plain, freedom and embracing grace, moonshone face, crush the berries in the snow, Dylan-esque romantic glow, self-indulgence, no dull gents, Tom Petty widens my jetty, Mick Jagger struts in, his dagger grabs me, Tori Amos doesn't blame us, but names us, Neil Young, this has been sung, washes away fertile dung, goddess kring, bada boo, bada bing, let it seep from deep within, Tecalote Canyon, Shannon, Canyon, Shannon be planning. Hey, check this out, guys. I forgot. My last name is Kringen, and so I call myself Goddess Kring because a lot of people don't know how to pronounce Kringen. They say Kringen or Kringer or whatever. There's not that many Kringens, I guess, 
in uh, the United States. They're mostly in Norway. And I was in Oslo in 2008 visiting my Norwegian friend there who invited me to stay with her. And that was amazing. Norway. I loved Norway. And uh, I, I forgot. I just remembered basically that she told me that the the word cring casting spelled with two K's, K-R-I-N-G, K-A-S-T-I-N-G. So instead of a C, it's a K for casting. Cring casting means broadcasting in Norwegian, which is very interesting because I've always wanted to broadcast to an audience through media, through video, through photography, through recording my voice. I used to make little recordings when I was 11 or 12 years old and do a lot of skits as a kid. And so it's just kind of neat synchronicity. And also my name, my initials is SNK, Shannon Nicole Kringen, which is sync, which makes me think of in sync and synchronicity, synchronicity and synchronicity, synchronicity. So it's kind of like really dreamy and magical in my opinion, that the word kring casting means broadcasting and that I'm Norwegian and that I just feel a kinship with broad. The idea of broadcasting really appeals to me and feels good. And so I hope you're getting something out of this. I've been enjoying reading my poetry into the camera. I mean, not the camera. This is not a camera. This is a recording device into the microphone into the audio land. If you want to see visuals, go to my YouTube channel and you can listen to these podcasts on my YouTube station, Shannon Kringen, with uh, visual entertainment. My art, my slideshow of my photography will entertain you visually. Thank you. Torn and torn, human form, reborn. Dominating crocodiles, cockroach slaughter, rats poisoned, fear of bats, Extinction of creatures. People dominate this planet. I can hardly stand it. Stranded, polluted and uprooted. Wake up and smell the Hitler done to Mother Earth. Wake up and smell the Hitler done to Mother Earth. <sighs> People dominate this planet. I can hardly stand it. Earth drips blood. Elephants, gorillas, tiger, humpback whale, grizzly bear, kind human, be honey, be kind honey, be kind honey, should be fashioned to have compassion for all living things. Who do we think we are? Humans dominate this planet. I can hardly stand it. 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 Winds on spiral drive. Bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the crane. Catch the winds on spiral drive. Crack the code left and right node. Solving the can of worms on my own terms. I wander and I wander, tripping over moon holler sand dollars. Enchanted land, smoky hands, rough and cracked. Take the sand and stand alone, all one. I present the present, desert the desert. Exercise, bring exorcism, cleanse, cleanse. Illusion to erosion, erosion bites fusion to explosion. Fusion drives illusion to erosion, erosion guides fusion to explosion. No thanks to. 
to the tanks of skank. I reject the neglect. Funnel cloud dancing loud. I wanna be the center of attention. I wanna be the center of attention. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.